I believe fundamentally that we're heading towards a future where the needs of every human on the planet, the basic needs of every human on the planet will be met. You know, what I mean by that is uh, access to clean water, food, shelter, uh, energy, communications, education, health care. Peter Diamandis sees several developments converging, radically altering the future we're expecting to see. The technology needed for this is already available and can be used. It's quite simple, really. The price of solar power is coming down so fast that in 20 years' time it could be almost free. When energy is almost free, there are new possibilities to tackle a future water crisis. It's certainly possible to convert salt water into sweet water, but it takes a lot of energy. Big changes are now on the way. With enough energy and fresh water, it will be possible to grow food in places that are now off limits. In the middle of the desert, for example. But if so many solutions are at hand and available, why then aren't they being put to use? Why do we only see a future in which one crisis replaces the other? When people think about the future, they forget where we've been the last hundred years. You know, we are living in a world where we're constantly being bombarded by negative news. You know, over and over and over again, you hear about this murder, about this economic crisis, about this terrorist activity. And there's a reason that we're fed such negative news. It's because, you know, literally the brain has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to pay far more attention to negative news than positive news because on the savannas of Africa, as we were evolving as humans, if you missed a piece of good news, well, that's too bad. Miss a piece of negative news and it could be your life, which is why most of the news media and most of the politicians will like use negative news to capture people's attention. The reality of the world we've had has been much, much better. You see, over the last hundred years, if you look at the data, over the last hundred years, the human lifespan has been literally extended by a factor of two. Um, the income for every nation adjusted for inflation has tripled. The cost of food has come down 13-fold, energy 20-fold, uh, transportation 100-fold, and communications over 1,000-fold. I mean, that's an extraordinary world to be alive in, where access to food, water, shelter, energy, health care, is exploding. And what's happening is these things are all due to one thing, technology. The technology that created these improvements isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. And so the improvements to our lives are going to accelerate as well. Peter Diamandis is not only an author, he also founded the X Prize Foundation an organization that hands out big prizes for technological innovation. In addition, he founded a university in the heart of Silicon Valley with well-known futurologist Ray Kurzweil. Here on the campus of the NASA Ames Research Center, an exclusive group of people meets regularly. During meetings at the Singularity University, they discuss which great technological innovations await us and how these will change the world. Yeah, well, it's Friday. Friday idealism. And that Peter D. at Diamondy stuff is a good place to start. I mean, the next thing I'll look at is some cheaper stuff I found on solar, or it was wind. But it's cheaper than 1.9 cents a megawatt. Clearly, it's going to go like computers where nobody talks about kilobytes anymore. They talk about, well, they don't even talk about it at 50 meg anymore. They talk about 50 gig. And terabytes are more important. Definitely, that's the way energy's gone. It's like kilowatts are gonna go, not be important, and megawatts are gonna be the thing. <laughs> well, then gigawatts, and probably terawatts. 
But I had a generator at the forest house where my mom lived in the woods. It was a three kilowatt generator. It allowed me to watch a video. Yeah, I put another gas tank on it. And I could watch two videos if I wanted. And run a few lights. Yeah, that, that article is from November 9th, so it's a month later than October 9th. And the price is down a, a, a bit. The first was 1.9 cents, and now it's 1.7 cents. And, I mean, that's $17 a megawatt. I mean, what does that matter when you can get a megawatt for 20 bucks? Uh, that will become more prevalent and then... I mean, that's not totally well distributed yet, but... Sometime soon it will be. And then the price of things like clean water get really good because I mean clean water is huge but I mean agriculture and stuff we're talking food and water for the whole world that's great The Eastern Siberian Arctic Sea Shelf contains 500 to 5,000 gigatons of methane hydrate uh, clathrate, and it is in meltdown. It started slowly in 2015. People think a new nuclear reactor meltdown is bad news. We haven't seen nothing yet. The Arctic methane release will be equivalent to 10 Hiroshima-sized bombs going off every second or 10 times current warming rate. 2016, the earth warmed by 0.2 degrees Celsius. So that scenario equals two degrees Celsius warming per year when it blows. Most have already collapsed. Uh, the ice shelves have already collapsed and the remaining ones are well underway to collapsing. We are 80 years ahead of all the forecasts. Unfortunately, for all life on earth, scientists missed the ball on this one. Governments did not listen and act appropriately, and the big fossil fuel industries fought tooth and nail to keep their pennies and dimes coming in. They sold the world, they lied to the world, and they condemned the world for a few beans. I mean, for quite a while, I've been saying we're in a global climate emergency and we need to respond appropriately. Yeah, this is getting a bit old. Poor Paul Beckwith, the guy who's talking about climate science. He basically laid the, 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 the what's that word? Uh, he says, the, nah, I forget, the, the Emperor of Doom. <laughs> That's not the right word, though. Anyway, yeah, he's always, I put him on always for the bad side. But I mean, we had super good news in the beginning. Like that Peter the Diamond is, it's quite positive. And then, yeah, the climate science is quite dire. And how do I justify that? Good news and bad news? Well, I don't 
What I'm thinking is that there's a weird window available right now. In the up the deserts and dry land around the world. I'll talk about that next Friday though. For now it's Christmas and we just have a bunch of stuff on our plate for 2018. And there it is.